Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to be introducing you to the character composer for Crazy Talk Animator 3. So basically the character composer is used to set up your 2D character. Uh, you can use it to do a character bone rig, you can manage all the character sprites, and you can also determine the layer order of your body sprites as well. And we'll explore each one of those options a little bit later on as we go through this tutorial. But on the screen right now we have one of our Elastic people. You can find him under Actor Character G3 Human Elastic Folk right there. And we also have a G2 character from Crazy Talk Animator 2, uh, Saul right here. He's a vector-based character, and you can find him under Actor, uh, Character, and G2 right there. But first of all, we're going to take our Elastic Dude here into Character Composer. So let's we'll have him selected. Let's go over here to the top left and enter into Composer Mode. So in Composer Mode, I'm just going to show you some quick navigation first. Make sure you have this uh, option selected at the top, Transform Part. You can hold the Alt mouse button, left click and drag to pan your camera around like this. Uh, holding both mouse buttons and Alt will allow you to zoom in and out like that. And you can also use your navigation up here, Z for zoom, X for camera pan, C for camera rotate, and this one allows you to focus everything on your screen. You can also uh, select home, and it'll center your character on the screen right there. And just go to focus all, and boom, we'll go back to this distance right here. So let's talk a little bit first about these three different edit modes. So we have transform part right here. If we select a part on our character, we can move it. And notice it'll, it'll move with the entire sprite. Now this brings up an important point. Every uh, part of your character, uh, your character's bone structure that has a red little dot on it, uh, that's going to be an entire sprite. So this forearm is not a separate sprite. In fact, this entire arm up into the wrist is a separate sprite by itself. All right. So if I want to like, you know, move this arm right here, I can select the upper arm, it'll move by itself. Lower arm, it'll still move the entire hierarchy and we can rotate it along like that and everything as well. And this default or freeze pose mode is generally used to determine bone sprite mapping relation. All right, now that brings us to this sprite editor right here. So uh, you can also transform the sprites. You can also use the one, two, and three hotkeys for these different, uh, options up here. So if I select transform sprite, notice if I select my forearm, uh, I can't really move anything. However, if I select the right arm, which is the actual sprite, the area that contains the sprite, notice that we have the uh, green selection box that appears. We also have the option to enter into the sprite editor. Uh, if we enter into the sprite editor, it'll show the entire sprite right there. So this sprite contains two bones, okay? This bone right here and this bone right here. And if we close this down, and we select the forearm, and I go into sprite mode here anyways, and I double click the forearm, you can see we don't have any separate sprites for this forearm bone, okay? So two bones and one sprite in this case. And that's the sprite uh, transform sprite mode. There's also, if you want to uh, go into transform sprite mode, if I wanted to move the sprite by itself without the bone, then that's what you can do here as well. All right, so we can control Z that. We won't modify that right now. If we want to mod modify the bone separately from the sprite, then we can use transform bone. And this will allow us to, you know, move an entire bone hierarchy. If we click and drag it out like that for some reason, we can move that entire bone out there as well. And we can, you know, take this second bone, rotate it out like this, because it's completely separate from the actual sprite, and it'll stay in position, right? So let's control Z that and undo it. Um, now, with the bone edit mode here is our transform bone mode selected, if I zoom in, see for example, I don't want to move the entire bone hierarchy. I just want to move this elbow a little bit to the side. Well, I can hold the shift key. And if I hold the shift key and click and drag on the node, it will allow me to move this node here separately without moving the entire uh, sprite or without moving the entire bone hierarchy there. Okay, a little useful tip there. So that's the transform, uh, transform sprite and transform bone modes. So to get into more detail on the bone editing, if you select a character's uh, bone, for example, right here, we also have this bone uh, editor that is a separate tool. So if we select that, we have a separate tutorial that goes into more detail on this, but this is basically where you can add bones, um, duplicate bones, uh, add pins and everything like that. And you can also uh, preview, and we're going to show wireframe right now real quick, and you can see that our character is made up of a wireframe mesh that allows us to morph the actual uh, sprites according to the bone direction. Uh, you can change the density of your uh, wireframe. Uh, if you have affect all layers selected, you can take that density down to like, you know, one and have a much less uh, detailed mesh if you want to save resources. 
However, we're going to keep that uh, where it is. And again, we have a separate tutorial on the bone editor. So we go into a lot more detail there. Thus, we have a lot more bone options as opposed to just the transform bone up here. Okay, and then on top of that, we also have the mask editor here. So if we want to mask out certain parts of our sprite, I have this uh, upper arm selected. Say, for example, I wanted to mask out my lower arm for some reason, the part of this sprite, give him a ghost arm. Well, we can just, you know, use our brush to uh, mask out the lower arm, just like this. There we go. And uh, close down the mask editor once that's finished. And our character should have an invisible ghost arm. There you go. If you'd want to do that, that's how you do it. So we're just going to press Control Z and undo that, though. Uh, we don't want to mask out anything in this particular case. Do that a couple times. There we go. All right, so that's your uh, bone editor and your mask editor uh, and how they relate to these three tools up here. Let's take a look over here at edit pose and preview mode now. So under edit pose, you can see our character, if we you know move him around, like I mentioned before, he's going to just snap back into place. Uh, different parts are going to snap back into place. However, if we uh, edit, go select edit pose and we move our character, his arm like this, you can see it's going to basically stand in that position. Now this is if you want your character to have, you know, this position as his default uh, position. Uh, you can do that. Uh, say for example, I wanted him, his arms to be a little bit closer to his body. I can do something like this and take this arm and move it closer to his body this way as well. And then if we go back into stage mode uh, over here, you can see he will remain in that position as his default position and a little bit closer to Saul where his arms are closer to his body. But we don't actually want that. We're going to keep him the way he is. So I'm going to press Control Z a couple times. That's going to take us back into composer mode and then Control Z again one more time. And so oh, three more times there. There we go. Now he's back to normal. All right. So that's how you can edit your character's pose. Now, if you want to uh, preview what your character's animation is going to look like, say, for example, you want to check the bone rig results, uh, which you might need to fine tune uh, for bone location or structure and uh, segmentation to get the best results. Then what you can do is you can go into preview mode here. And there's also preview mode in the bone editor that I showed you earlier. So let's take a look at how you can, you know, uh, manipulate your character to kind of see results. So these characters are loaded with uh, human IK and FK. So if we select a child bone right here, down like here, like his hand, and we move it around like this, you can see that is human IK at work, inverse kinematics. And we can make him rub his stomach like this and have all sorts of fun with that. And there's also forward kinematics as well. So for example, if we select, uh, let's move this up here a little bit. If we select his leg uh, like this, we can also rotate it and we can move this as well. You know, have some uh, shaking his hips there, doing a like cool looking dance move. All right. And uh, we can take the knee, rotate that, and it'll just, you know, kind of morph the uh, mesh there, but our foot will remain uh, stationary. So that's uh, forward kinematics and inverse kinematics at work. All right, so pretty cool stuff. You can just go ahead and preview that on your own time with your uh, particular character. Well, let's talk about facial animation setup really quickly. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but if you have your character's face selected, you'll see an option over here for facial animation setup. And this is where you can adjust different expressions. Like say, for example, I took my character's mouth. You can see if I select this expression right here, our character's face is going to look exactly like that. If we want to make it a bit more extreme, we can stretch it out a bit more. And if we want to uh, see this lips zipped tight like this one right here, you can see the guide mode. If you wanted them to be a bit tighter, you can probably, you know, just uh, move these mesh parts right here and, you know, just move them up like that and zip them a little bit closer. Uh, but you can have fun with that on your own time. We're going to have a separate tutorial on this, so we're not going to go into too much detail, but there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in this panel right here. But in this tutorial, we're going to explore other things first of all. So now that we're out of the facial animation setup, we also, we're going to talk now about the scene and the layer manager and the content manager over here on the bottom right. So the content manager allows you to, you know, add anything to your character. Like you can add a prop to his, to his hand, for example, you have business objects. Maybe we always want him to be on his phone. So we can permanently attach a prop to his hand if we wanted to. I'm not going to do that right now, but, uh, that's what the content manager is for. The scene manager allows you to take a look at your character's hierarchy and select separate bones, just like this way. You can left click and you can twirl them up, twirl them down to uh, change the uh, appearance in the scene in the uh, scene manager right here. 
You can also click and drag to select an entire hierarchy like this way. Uh, left click and drag. You can also use your traditional click, hold shift, and click again to select an entire hierarchy that way. And you can also, you know, uh, click and press control and click different parts individually to select the hierarchy that way. And if you control click again, you're going to deselect different parts. All right, so that's how you can uh, modify, uh, just kind of mess around with the scene manager here. You can lock certain parts as well, as well as sh uh, show them or hide them. We're going to go to the layer manager now. And in the layer manager, um, we have separate sprites uh, that you can see here, and they're all layered on top of each other. So for example, the top layer is our left hand layer right here. So the left hand is actually on top of everything. Now it's not going to affect the Z depth of your characters at hand. It's just the way that the sprites are layered. All right, so you can see here that the hip layer, which contains the torso, is actually at the bottom. Now, if I go into preview mode like I did before, you know, we can have our character, you know, rub his stomach like this. Yummy. All right. Uh, but we can also, if we wanted to have our character's hand permanently below the torso, then we can change the layer by simply clicking and dragging it. Let's go to preview mode here first. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to show you as well, you can actually hide the bones by selecting and deselecting show bone. You can uh, change the opacity to zero if you want. I'm just going to change the opacity to zero right now because we're not going to be talking too much about bones. So if I wanted to, uh, you know, bring this layer down, I can click and drag it. And you can see that uh, that little red line there indicates where I'm going to click and drag it to. You know, we can just click and drag it down there and uh, scroll down. Again, I can, you know, click and drag and scroll at the same time and place it below my torso. And same thing with the uh, upper arm here, or the arm sprite. You can click and drag that all the way down here. Where am I, where am I there? Okay, there we go. And let's just uh, click and drag and scroll it, scroll it down. And I believe it was below the actual hand sprite. Right? You can also change the layer of the bones as well, uh, right here, if you want to click and drag those. But we're not going to do that right now. Let's just go ahead and preview what we can do with the hand behind the uh, torso now. Uh, whoops. Make sure we have the hand selected. There we go. Oh, that's the uh, hand nub there. All right. So we can select this hand, and uh, we can have him kind of scratch his butt through the magic of changing layers. We have the separate animation like that, and just you can preview different animations by doing that as well. So here's your, uh, again, your IK at work, the magic of uh, technology for scratching our character's butt. All right, so uh, that's how you can modify the layer levels of your character. Now keep in mind that's going to be permanent, but you can also modify in stage mode the level of sprites as well in real time. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about with this particular character is the external image editor. So if I select, you know, part of my character, um, say, for example, I select his hip layer right here, you'll see that we have the option here for to launch an external image editor. In this case, mine is uh, Photoshop. So if I click uh, launch external image editor, that's going to load up that sprite in Photoshop. And, you know, we can write any design on it we want. You know, we just have a simple brush selected with a black... Uh, brush and you know say well, for example I want to write a peace sign on my character's uh, chest well I can go ahead and do that really quickly and just go ahead and select file save and once I save that it's going to update in composer mode right here you can see now we have a nice peace sign on the middle of his torso but it looks kind of ugly so I'm going to control Z that just kind of wanted to show you how you can launch and quickly edit your uh, image based sprites in an external program like Photoshop all right, so we're done with this this guy pretty much. Let's go go ahead and uh, go back to our stage mode here. And I'm going to load in our boy Saul here in composer mode. So Saul is a G2 vector-based character. So this character, uh, the elastic dude, his face is image are vector-based, but his body is all just simple images, okay? For Saul, he's entirely vector-based. So we're going to go select him, go into composer mode here. And we have a separate tutorial that details more about the differences between vector-based characters and image-based uh, for Crazy Talk Animator 2. But you can see with Saul on the screen right now, it automatically notes he's a G2 character. And you can see we have the uh, um, import option for the actor design template, uh, SWF file. We also have confirm multi-angle settings and character proportion and calibration. And we also have the sprite editor, which I showed you before, and render style. So render style is a, an option for vector-based characters. We can give them these really cool templates that come embedded with uh, Crazy Talk Animator 3. 
So you can see the retro look right there. Um, and maybe this neon style. And because they all have different vector groups, we can select, you know, the separate group and we can change the brightness, for example, of his uh, skin to something a little bit darker. And we can, you know, have fun with all that stuff. But that's, uh, that's basically your render style for uh, G2 characters. If you use render style on your image based characters, all you're able to do is you're able to adjust just these things right here. You're not able to use these templates. Okay. So you're, you will be able to adjust the brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation, but it'll be for the entire uh, image of your character's body. Okay. All right. So I'll close that down for now. And on top of that, G2 characters, you're able to change the uh, perspective. So they have different faces right here. So they're essentially characters you can apply 3D animations to. And they will take that data from the 3D animation and create sort of a kind of a hybrid 2D, 3D animation result, which looks pretty cool. And we have a separate tutorial for Crazy Talk Animator 2 on that as well. But that's about the only differences between the uh, image-based characters and the vector-based characters. Now, I wanted to mention one last thing before we leave here, and that is the options you have for creating heads in Crazy Talk Animator 3's Character Composer. So the head creation options are up here on the top. So if you click on this, you have the option to create a morph-based head, create a sprite-based head, and if you want to select an item on your character's body, like say, for example, we select his uh, right arm here, then you have the option to convert that to a morph-based head as well. In this case, we probably wouldn't want to do that since his arm is not really head-like, not really shaped like a head, but you can create morph-based heads and create sprite-based heads from scratch using these two options up here as well. So that's basically all there is to it. That's a brief introduction to the character composer for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot and we'll have other future tutorials that go into more detail on different types of character creation and modification and all that fun stuff. So make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and our YouTube channel as well. And I'll see you in the next video.